this video, we'll go back in time to the age of disco when Jimmy Carter was president. Yep, 1978. We'll take a look at one of my favorite comic books of all time, Marvel 2-in-1 number 46, featuring the Fantastic Four's Thing and guest starring The Incredible Hulk. In this story, we'll find out what happens when The Incredible Hulk sees himself on television. Does he decide to go to Hollywood for autographs? Does he want to be in the show himself? Or does something else happen? Alan Kupperberg was the writer and artist. That's kind of hard to say. Roger Stern was the editor, and at the time, Jim Shooter was editor-in-chief of Marvel. Before we get into it, I have to point out the ad on the left featuring the Energized Spider-Man. I always wanted that action figure as a kid, but I missed out. I had a regular Spider-Man action figure, though, but I digress. It's Energized Spider-Man with Spider-Sense. Battery not included. Turn the Spider-Sense activator. Red Dragon appears to go into action. Attach the web climber. Flip the switch, and he climbs automatically. This book is filled with pop culture references from the 70s that make it a true time capsule that we'll point out as we go along reviewing the story. It begins at the home of the Fantastic Four, the Baxter Building. And there we find the ever-loving blue-eyed thing, as he often referred to himself, attempting to relax watching his expensive, brand-new 25-inch television set. You know, those things were about as expensive as televisions today. I mean, keep in mind at that time you could get a comic book for 35 cents, but a 21 to 25 inch TV cost between 400 to 600 dollars, which adjusted for today's inflation would be close to 3300 dollars or more. Now this is important context since in the story we see that the thing gets so jealous over finding out that the Hulk has his own TV show, he puts his foot right through his very expensive brand new 25 inch television set. But first, before we get to that, let's review our very first pop culture reference. Before smashing his TV, The Thing compares The Hulk to the biggest, most iconic character of the 1970s, Happy Days The Fonz, played by Henry Winkler. He says, The Fonz, he ain't. Happy Days ran from 1974 to 1984 for 11 seasons. According to Wikipedia, in, in 1978, Happy Days was the second most popular show of the year. The previous year had been number one. Now, if memory serves me correctly, Happy Days did very well up until the Fonz took on Mr. T and the A-Team in the Tuesday night at 8 p.m. time slot. Apparently, nothing could beat the A-Team. You're so crazy, fool. Yeah. Right away, we get our next pop culture reference, where The Thing states that he could knock the Happy Day spinoff Laverne and Shirley off the air in no time flat, to which the Human Torch replies, you'd probably do better as Laverne or Shirley. And that show was number one that year, replacing Happy Days as the top show of the year, and pushing the Fonz to number two. Now, at this point, The Thing bellows out his own insult before throwing his wrecked television set at the Human Torch. Look alive, you Sesame Street dropout, he says, making our third pop culture reference. Now, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman advise The Thing that instead of wrecking the Baxter building, he should go to Hollywood and talk to the producer of the Incredible Hulk TV series, which The Thing thinks is a great idea. Now, next... We see the Hollywood sign, which has been a very important pop culture icon for decades. But in 1978, it was in desperate need of repair. It was that year that restoration work was actually completed in November. Now take note of the D toward the end of the panel. It appears to have fallen down. Now look at the actual image of the sign in 1978 before the restoration was completed. It's the second O that is falling down. I have to wonder why they drew the wrong letter falling down in that panel. Well, the Hollywood sign makes our fourth pop culture reference in this book. Premiering Friday after Wonder Woman, it's the all-new Incredible Hulk. Now, after showing us some hoods planning on kidnapping a future Hulk co-star, Karen Page, to make what they think is going to be easy money, we then switch to the location of one Bruce Banner walking alone in the cold streets of a small Nevada town where he sees the Incredible Hulk TV show in a store window and becomes infuriated that they turned his life into some sort of soap opera. The transformation is triggered 
and the Incredible Hulk decides to leap off into the sky towards Hollywood. And this is after he smashes the, uh, the windows and the television sets and everything. But before he departs, let's look at the fifth pop culture reference, which is the Incredible Hulk TV show itself, and its real-life t- star, Bill Bixby. Now you can see most of Bixby's name on the TV screen in the panel before the Hulk smashes it. Now also I recognize the names Sonny Bono, Charo, Howdy Doody, and there's a couple other names I don't recognize. But I'm almost certain that they never guest starred on the Incredible Hulk TV show in real life. Next, we see The Thing is finally arriving in Hollywood, where he runs into the fictional kid show Duck Uncle Waddles. I counted this as a pop culture reference because it appears to be, in fact, a cameo by Marvel's own Howard the Duck. He was pretty big in the 70s. Now, the 2006 official handbook of the Marvel Universe included Uncle Waddles as an alias for Howard, which is the only real proof we have that this is Howard and not a guy in the duck suit. About the same time, the Incredible Hulk is seen smashing through some Hollywood studios, where he eventually runs through and smashes MASH. Now that's the very popular Korean War comedy drama of the 1970s, which starred Alan Alda. MASH was a top 10 hit that year. An interesting interesting, uh, side note, MASH's final episode in 1983 was one of the highest rated television episodes of all time. MASH also appeared in other comics as well, such as Mad Magazine. Next, we have to take a peek at the ads just past the middle of the book. Now, if you grew up in the 70s like I did, I'm sure you're going to feel some nostalgia for the cartoons advertised for the brand new 78 season on NBC Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, one of those cartoons just happened to be the Fantastic Four series, which included Herbie the Robot instead of the Human Torch. A really fun cartoon show that year was the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla Power Hour. And that series was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm currently, I'm hoping right now that they'll put the entire show on uh, DVD someday. Uh, that same year, Godzilla was also a star in Marvel Comics. He naturally had a run-in or two with the Fantastic Four and several other fan, er, excuse me, Marvel superheroes. And Yogi Bear made a comeback that year, changing his uh, location vacation to uh, from the state park to outer space that's probably just to cash in on the star wars craze at the time which you'll see on the ad on the next page which is a full page ad promoting marvel star wars book okay back to the story we find that the bad guys have kidnapped karen page the future co-star of the hulk tv show at least in the comic book world uh, the hulk and the thing are now scrapping which probably had made the 20th time they'd fought up to this point in history. Now after the Hulk pretty much wrecks everything, he finally thinks that the Thing is not responsible for the Hulk TV show as he previously thought. And he takes the word of the producer that he'll make the show better. Now can you imagine the Hulk as a TV critic anyway? I mean, you have to wonder what he based his critiques on. Somehow the bad guys uh, end up captured as well. Now this page brings us to the next pop culture reference, Cheryl Teagues, who is mentioned by the producer. She was a hugely popular uh, model in 1978. Now why the producer would choose her name to offer to the Hulk as a comparison, I'm not sure. It seems like the Hulk would have much rather been compared to an action star, uh, which would have probably been at the time Burt Reynolds. Now we fast forward back to New York City where the thing opens up a special package from Hollywood, which includes the script for a proposed TV show with him as the star. The thing isn't happy to find out it's a comedy sitcom called Thing in the Family, with the thing playing the part of Meathead. Yes, this is our last pop culture reference to All in the Family, a show, a top 10 hit that year that had been running since 1971. It's a show that today would have probably be killed by the censors before it even had a chance to air. But it was very popular in the 70s. It was a stark contrast to Happy Days and other popular shows of that decade. And the story ends with the thing crumpling up his script and seriously considering taking up Uncle Waddle's job offer for the kids show. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to support our channel and hit the bell for future notifications of our upcoming videos. Thank you very much.